Our next speaker is a very special guy, actually. He, he spoke at our first Infinite Man Summit uh, in London in 2016. And it was actually his first time speaking publicly. And it was crazy. His story is crazy. He basically went through the craziest story ever, almost died, managed to heal himself, and just come back from the, the darkness, the dark night of the soul. He had a really big one. And his story was so raw and powerful. And it just everyone was just talking about that for like the first half of the conference. That's his talk was the only thing people were talking about. They're like, that was fucking crazy. And I saw him years later and he was like, yeah, my talks aren't like that anymore. That was the first, that was the craziest one of all. And I'm like, yeah, you've, he's calmed down a bit. Uh, but it was epic. And uh, yeah, he's a great, great speaker. And he knows so much about uh, the body, human health. And he's just in a beautiful place. And he's here to share some of his wisdom with a new talk for us. So please make some noise for the fantastic Josh Mason. <laughs> Mr. Josh. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, awesome to be here. So I have a very deep, deep title here, How to Overcome Your Shit and Win, No Matter What Hand You've Been Dealt. That's really what my message is. My first time I spoke here, I spoke about detoxification, and I am going to talk about detoxification this time around, but really what my message is to the planet, to humanity, is that you can overcome anything, and my story is proof of that. So, and be super spiritual too because that's important, right? Um, okay, so I'm just gonna get into a story and, I, and I'm just gonna try and channel it and not get too much into my mind and just really be present with, with the story. So I'm gonna have to go back into history in order to go into that story, because it was many years ago. And like Sasha said, my first time speaking about what I'm about to speak to you about was six months, maybe five months after I had just gone through about a four year ordeal, uh, a serious ordeal with suicidal depression and anxiety and panic attacks and uh, my physical body shut down on me and, and all of that. So, so this was my previous life here, if you look up on the slides. That was um, back before I got sick. Before October 2013, I was working in corporate America and I was also a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion. I was traveling around the world, competing all around the world. I won the world championships as a white belt. I won the Pan Ams as a blue belt. I won Abu Dhabi trials as a purple belt. I was a world-class purple belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, competing with a lot of guys that you see in the UFC and competing. I was on that trajectory to be, you know, what I thought I could have, I was certain I could have been the, one of the best black belts in the world. Um, but then I got sick. And what happened is, what happened is in about a two week period of time, I started experiencing um, severe, severe panic attacks, depression, anxiety. It was like my mind, my body, my spirit had collapsed on me. Okay, and prior to this, like I told you, I was a fully functional, so I was a fully functional dude, like fully aware of my thoughts and, and didn't have any mental issues or physical issues. and. In that two week period of time, it was as if I was taking acid, okay? It was as if, as, it was as if I was taking acid every single morning and every single night, or a bad ayahuasca trip, or a bad weed brownie. And I wasn't taking any substances. And my mind and my body just started giving out on me. That one voice became three or four different voices in my head. Um, I started to, to not be able to even hear my internal voice. I started to, the, the feeling that I had in my body on a regular basis was basically the way that, what, when you step, if you were to take a misstep on stairs and your balls go into your gut, that feeling is what I lived with 24 seven, okay? Well, actually it was about 21 seven because I slept for three hours a night, two to three hours a night if I was lucky for three and a half years. And another example that I can give though I haven't experienced this is is as if somebody had a gun to your head. Imagine the way you would feel if somebody had a gun to your head. Blood is rushing through your body, you're anxious, you're nervous, your life is flashing before your eyes, you can't, nothing makes any sense, you're just in this ball of anxiety. And that is actually the space that I lived in for almost four years. So if my story seems a little dramatic to you or drastic, just know that everything I did was an attempt to get out of that space of consciousness that I was in. Every single thing I did, the drastic things that I did were all in an effort to escape 
or overcome or transcend this place that I was living in. So um, the first, I can't read that. So the first thing that I did was I refused all help. I, I wanted to deal with this on my own. So I was, I, I was basically figuring out a way to self-medicate with modafinil, which I got from India with an online pharmacy, and Xanax, and uh, whatever other drug that I could find, and make my own little cocktail in my own, you know, in my own bedroom, make my own little cocktail, try and figure out the solution to this problem, because I did not have faith at that time in Western medicine, and I still don't have much faith in it. But eventually, I had to surrender, and I had to understand that I did not know what the heck was going on. I didn't know what was best for me, and I had to go to Western medicine, and I saw a psychiatrist, and I was sitting across from that psychiatrist for an hour, and in one hour, he told me that I was bipolar. He told me that I had severe depression, that severe anxiety disorder, um, ADHD, OCD, you know? And I think I got five prescriptions in one hour, okay? Five mind-altering, soul-altering, destiny-altering <laughs> medications in one hour. I got Latuda and Trazodone and Zoloft and I don't even remember the others, but that's, that's what happened to me and that's the path that I had chosen because I didn't know what the heck to do with myself. Um, I tried everything that I could on my own. All of the modalities that I knew up until that point, um, I tried. And I didn't know much because I only had mild, regular human anxiety up until that point or anxiety before going into a jiu-jitsu fight. Right? So I didn't, I, I didn't have good training on what it took to calm down a, an, an overactive or a, a, a sick mind. So uh, eventually, um, after about five months of taking, rotating between 10 different psychiatric drugs, um, going back to him and saying, hey, this didn't work, this didn't work, uh, and he gave me different ones each time. I eventually uh, flushed all of the drugs down the toilet. There was one day where I literally woke up and said, I cannot take another one of these pills. This is killing me. I would rather die or go crazy and try and figure out a way out of this hellhole than continue to take these drugs that are making me feel like I'm in purgatory or worse, like in limbo, okay? Like I'm just, I'm not alive, I'm not dead, I'm just a floating meat body, wasting space, watching TV, eating greasy foods. So I flushed them all down the toilet. I don't recommend you do that. It's had an awful, awful withdrawal for about six days. Not the way to go. Um, so at that point in time, I, I started just getting my feet wet into spirituality, just reading a blog post or two about spirituality, uh, about the meaning of depression, the meaning of anxiety, the meaning of panic. And I came across this National Geographic article on ayahuasca. And ayahuasca, I'm sure no, most of you know what it is at this point, but it's a, it's a vine and a, the copy vine and the chacruna leaves brewed together for about 24 to 72 hours. It's an Amazonian medicine and it creates a purgative effect. You can vomit, you can crap your pants, you can you experience hallucinations or visions. It connects you to spirit, it connects you to earth, right? And I said, this is, I'm going to the Amazon jungle and I am drinking this stuff because what I have is a spiritual problem and no one around me understands this. No one gets this, this level of despair. And I didn't want to listen to people who didn't get it. What, how, in my mind, at that, in my soul and my spirit at the time, I didn't care that my psychiatrist went to Harvard. I didn't care that he was a doctor. I didn't care that he had decades of school because when I looked in his eyes, I didn't actually see that he knew what I was going through. You know, when someone goes through a, a hell, when someone goes through something, you can look at their eyes and you can know that guy had experienced these loops. That guy has experienced this neurological pattern. That guy has experienced this pain in his body. It's a feeling you get when you look at someone. You know very well if they've gone through what you've gone through, right? And I did not feel that. Without any of my spiritual training, I knew to listen to my intuition and just go on my own path, my own destiny. So I, I flew to the Amazon and I drank ayahuasca 
And after one ceremony, I flew back home because it was agonizing. I could not finish the five ceremonies. I had too much pain inside of me, and it was just too agonizing to, to continue moving forward. And I actually went right into a mental hospital after that because I got home to New Jersey and I told my father, I said, Dad, I need to go to the hospital because I'm very afraid that I'm going to kill myself. Okay? So again, this entire time I'm telling this story, remember that if you missed this step, <laughs> what, what it would feel like and replay that all day, every day, all day, every day, and t seven hours throughout the night. Just imagine that, right? So... Um, so I go to the hospital and I wake up day one in the hospital and I'm like, I'm going back to the Amazon jungle. They gave me some intense medications and it put me out and I woke up and I was just like, I'm going back to the Amazon one day. But I knew that I had preparatory work to do before I went back to the Amazon jungle. Okay? So I, I knew, based on that one ceremony, it was unbelievably powerful to go through that one ceremony, but based on that experience, I knew that I had to clean my body, that I had to, to experience other realms in a lighter way. So I started doing things like ketamine and mushrooms, right? Ayahuasca was like the rocket ship. I needed to explore maybe a helicopter first or something, you know, um, a trampoline maybe. But, but I, so, so what I did is I actually, in New York City, you can do ketamine. Um, at the time, I don't know if it's still legal now, but it was legal and you can do ketamine for if you're suicidal, basically. So I did about four or five, I don't remember exactly, ketamine injections. It gave me some therapeutic benefit, but really I was just drowning, continuously drowning. So then I started doing mushrooms and I started experimenting with, with mushrooms, hallucinogenic mushrooms by myself in the forest. And I would make teas and drink these mushrooms in the forest and connect to the trees and to, the na to nature, to myself, to God to whatever I could connect to, aside from the hell that I was in. And I probably did mushrooms about 25 times, mostly on my own. And um, I, I learned a lot about the earth and learned a lot about myself. And, and every single experience was agonizing, OK? Agonizing. I didn't have any of those trips that you talk, you know, people talk about in movies where you're like, yeah, bro, yeah, you know? It, it was all just hell. Just imagine you take that tea. And within 20 minutes, you are just stepping into hell, and there is just demons and darkness all around you. And that has, was all of my experiences. And, and I did these things because, first of all, I was a fighter. And second of all, I believed that in order to overcome something, you have to go through it. You have to transcend it, go pierce it, not run away from it, not go above it, below it. I was just like, what is this? I'm, I'm fucking going into it. Whatever this is, I'm going into it. And each time I did a ceremony, I was just like, I'm in this thing. I'm not running away from anything. Show me, well, show me my demons. Show me my darkness. And by the end of it, I was curled up like a little baby crying. But that's the attitude I had in the beginning, at least. So we keep moving forward along this journey. At, that point, at this point in time, as we're on this slide, it's probably over a, a year by now. Um, and I start d diving deeper into other modalities, things like enemas and fasting and juice fasting and water fasting. I would fast for weeks at a time. Um, and I started making diet changes. I started understanding, hey, this is a physical body that whatever we put in, we are going to get out. It's an equation. What I put into this body is what I get out, right? Just like oil in a car. If you put shitty oil in a car, car doesn't run well. And I would say a body is way more particular, way more complex, and there is a ton more ranges of, of oil and gasoline for, for a body than there is for a car. Um, and then I, I went back to the Amazon jungle. I went back to the Amazon jungle, and I spent six months drinking ayahuasca, uh, 21 ceremonies over the course of six months, and I was ex in a spiritual boot camp, a self-appointed boot camp, and I just focused on my breath and focused on meditation and yoga and moving away from my mind. See, at that point in time, it had occurred to me that I was very sick. Okay, I, was, I had a sick, sick mind. And I had to come out of my mind. And it, 
I literally wanted to separate, I wanted to kill my mind, but I still wanted my heart and my soul. But my mind was poison. My mind was venom, toxic, toxic venom. It was, it was spewing hatred and disdain and torturous, torturous thoughts on a regular basis. And somehow I had to walk around as a human being completely ignoring everything that was going on here. Everything, right? In the spiritual journey, they teach us to like move from your head to your heart. Well, it's fucking impossible to not have thoughts. It's impossible to not be up here a lot of the time, especially in this culture. So I literally had to, my mission, which wasn't a great mission, and I'm sure I could have done it differently from what I know now, was to literally just ignore every single thing that went on up here. Every thought, every thought, whether it was a good or bad, because for me, whatever went up came down. So if I got a little joyous for five minutes, I eventually, it came right back down. Somehow it flipped. It's like I could look at the sun and be like, oh, that's a nice sun. And then somehow it would go into, what if this happens? And what if that happens? Oh my God, I'm dying. Like, it, it, I don't know the exact loop that happened with the sunlight on that particular day, but the loop just eventually flipped and I was down into the dark, right? So my mission through my breath, through self-love, through touching the earth, and through really walking around the jungle like this, uh, 16, 17 hours a day like this, and then repeating a mantra as, as Will, Will, is that right? Was talking about mantras. We have mantras all the time, right? And I realized that, and my mantra was, fuck you, go kill yourself, everyone hates you, uh, they all hate you here, they all know you're depressed, you're gonna die, you got kissed by the devil, you're fucked, you're tortured, you're a tortured soul, you're like Gollum from Lord of the Rings, so that was all going on, and I literally just had to be like, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, all day, all day, every day, I love you. And just completely change my mantra, right? Change what was happening inside of my, my head and in my heart. So six months in the jungle, and um, I made a lot of progress. I connected to the earth. Ayahuasca has a way of really connecting you to nature, connecting you to what's important. Um, it has a way of cleaning your body. And that's when I started really diving into detoxification, cleaning the physical body. Ayahuasca had a way of forcing you to clean. Um, any physical stuff that you had in, had in your system, ayahuasca would, would clear and show you the spiritual or the emotional component to that physical toxicity. Right, so when you come in there, most Westerners are filled with pounds and pounds and pounds of fecal matter <laughs> and all kinds of other crap. And then ayahuasca will clear it, and in each ceremony will clear a little percentage of it. And then you, know, you can experience like a memory of when you got hit when you were a kid and how something tightened up in your gut, and then you, uh, you were constipated in a particular way, or you had an energetic pathway towards constipation or holding storing energy in that particular way for decades after that, right? And these are what's known as samskaras, which I'll talk about uh, towards the end. So anyway, um, I start, I'm, I'm con my life is just a full-time detox, full-time detox. To give you an idea, because I, I don't, I don't want to go too long into this story, I could take up the whole hour. To give you an idea of how serious and devoted I was, a typical routine for me, was that I would wake up and I would drink a gallon or a gallon and a half of distilled water and I would stretch and meditate and do mantras for two to two and a half hours before I was even able to have a bowel movement. And that's with taking laxatives the night before and, I, and that's what I needed to do to have a bowel movement. And any interruption in that dance, I, and I wouldn't go to the bathroom for the whole day because something was so tight inside of me, was so scared, was so nervous that if something triggered me in the morning, it was like I could go a whole day without having a bowel movement. And then if something triggered me the next morning, I could go a whole day without having a bowel movement. And at that point in time, you guys may not understand this or connect to this, but being in the jungle, detoxing my body, my life revolved around my bowel movements. Like that was yesterday's energy. Yesterday, if I couldn't clear yesterday, then I was like double heavy today, right? So. It may not make much sense, but at some point it will when you go to the jungle or do other spiritual things. Okay, 
So then uh, while I was in the jungle on those two, visit, two situations, uh, those two visits, um, I, the shamans were all telling me that I should do a dieta, okay, a plant dieta, which is a, um, a, a diet basically an apprenticeship where you work with the shamans because they had told me, you know, you have a very big problem, uh, but you also have a big medicine and you need to implement all of this that you're going through and, and become a shaman. You need to learn how to be a shaman with us, basically. So I went to the Amazon a third time and I was in isolation in, in uh, Cantamana, Peru. I didn't have any contact with humans. I was isolated in the jungle for uh, what I thought was going to be 90 days. And uh, the only contact I had was with the shamans who would bring me lunch and dinner every day. And oftentimes no dinner because I was drinking ayahuasca three to, three to four times a week. So after 30 days of doing this dieta, which I could talk about that dieta for an entire hour, it was the most intense human experience I know of anyone has, who has ever gone through <laughs> personally. Um, it wasn't pleasant and it was, I still, it's still, I still haven't fully resolved it in my psyche and my consciousness about what that dieta meant for me and whether it was good for me or not. But at the end of that dieta, I was a broken, disheveled fragment of a human being, fragment of a soul. Um, I, that was three years of working my ass off, spending every penny I had on my health. And uh, it's interesting. I noticed, I noticed a lot of yawns, and that's because you guys just ate. Most people get tired after they eat. So pay attention. If you're tired after eating, it was probably a shitty meal, but also it has to do with your gut because you shouldn't get exhausted after eating. And I know this is not a boring talk. So it could be, but I doubt it. So, um, <clears throat> so at that point in time, I was a disheveled human being, a disheveled spirit, and I was at my wit's end. And I went to my friend's place in Miami after 30 days of doing this dieta. And my friend, I literally had to have my friend choke me unconscious one day. It was actually in the evening. And he lived on the 22nd floor in Miami or Fort Lauderdale. And I was so close to jumping off of that balcony. So fucking close. I don't know what it was that there was like... 51% of me, there was 49% of me that was just like, I can't do this anymore. I am fucking done. I am done. And I was literally at the balcony. And then 51% of me freaked out after I thought that and actually believed it for a second and ran into his bedroom, taught him how to do a triangle choke. He didn't know jujitsu. Uh, I literally taught him how to do a triangle choke and he choked me out and he put me out. And I did that because I just needed a second of a break. I needed a... a 10 second rest from my thoughts. It was like I couldn't get a break from this demon that was just whispering and screaming at me all the time, all the time, all the time, nonstop, literally 21 7. Again, three or four, two, sometimes one, sometimes zero. At most, I would sleep four hours a night for three years, okay? And none of that stuff worked. The Xanax and the, all of that stuff made it even worse. The sleeping pills that I had tried years before. So um, these are all photos, by the way. So anyway, um, the, the final thing I decided to do when I left Miami to go back home, the final thing I decided to do was to take Iboga. Iboga is, um, is another hallucinogen uh, that's about a 24-hour experience, and it's native to the Gabonese jungle, um, Africa. And it's another hallucinogen. It's a, it's a shamanic medicine. It's supposed to be even more intense and more powerful than ayahuasca. And I vowed to myself, after listening somewhere on Joe Rogan podcast or something like that, I vowed to myself that I would do iboga before I killed myself, that I had to do iboga. Because in my mind, I was broken and I needed some sort of reset. And in my mind, that was the way to reset your brain. Like, if you read Eckhart Tolle, he talks about how he went through severe suicidal depression for seven years, and then one day he woke up and was fucking enlightened. Well, I was like, I need to stimulate that one day. I need to stimulate that with iboga. I need to stimulate it with the ayahuasca. How, what can I do to like create that, that experience where I'm, oh my God, I realize that I'm not 
a demon. I'm not dying. I'm not evil. I'm not tortured. I, I, I realize that I'm, I'm Josh, you know? So I was two days away from getting on a plane to go to Africa. I had not told a soul. I told Edin, my friend who choked me out, and I didn't tell anyone else, and I opened up credit cards to pay for all of that, because at this point, I was already 100K deep, more than 100K deep. And, and um, Iboga would have killed me. I'm almost certain that if I had gone to the jungle to do Iboga in that state, I was 30 pounds lighter than I am now, wasn't digesting foods, I couldn't go five minutes without a panic attack. I don't even know how I would have handled the flight, but I'm 99% sure, certain that I would have died in Africa. Either the Iboga would have killed me, or I was gonna kill myself. I was gonna fast in the jungle, walk into the jungle with no compass, no nothing, no water, no food, and get lost. And that was my, basically my plan. So don't worry, we'll get into the light very soon. I know it's, it's getting a little heavy. Um, so I was two days away from getting on that plane, and I found out about uh, mercury poisoning from an article on the internet. I, well, I, I had heard of mercury poisoning several times before, but I didn't give it any credence. And I, I read a woman's story, her name was Connie Fox, and her story, after reading hundreds of spiritual books, hundreds of books about mental illness, bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, any book I could find on any of those subjects, which none of them resonated with me. None of them made any sense. If, if this was a shamanic initiation, surely by isolating myself, closing my life to every single person in my life, living in the jungle by myself, without human contact, drinking ayahuasca, taking this plant called, this tree called white acaspi, eating the specific diet, surely that I would have become a shaman if that was what I was supposed to do. Or surely I would have had a breakthrough, right? So I read her story and I break down into tears and I just think to myself, this is what I've been dealing with all of these years. This is what I've been dealing with. It's this fucking mercury. And I had mercury fillings on the right side of my mouth, huge, huge mercury fillings. And I broke down into tears and I called my mom down into the basement and I called my dad on speakerphone and I just said, guys, you were about to lose your son. I was at that point in time, 20 hours, 24 hours away from going to Africa. I need money, I need help. This is what I'm dealing with. I'm certain of it. I need your support or you're gonna lose me. And I just gave it to them like that. And, and my dad support, I had zero financial support from anyone this entire journey. I did it every, all by myself through caddying at a country club. You could be mentally deranged. There are, most of the people at country clubs who are caddies are actually mentally deranged and, and they induce it with drugs. But I was not taking drugs, but I was in the same state as them and it was a perfect home for me because I was virtually a heroin addict without taking any substances. Um, and that's how I made all my money. And you can make amazing money at a country club. You can, I, I was making 200, 250 bucks a day cash, you know? So, so anyway, they, they vowed to help me and um, I decided to embark on a heavy metal and parasite detoxification protocol. And when I came here last time, uh, three years ago, the extent of my gift to humanity was, guys, you gotta do a heavy metal detox, it changed my life. And all of that's true and we're gonna go into all of it, why it's important, but in the three years that I've had since the last Infinite Man Summit, I've learned a lot, I've gone through more darkness, I've gone through more of my shadows, and I even had a severe back injury after all of that and making a recovery and getting my mind back, which I didn't mention, sorry, I, through the mercury detox, through the parasite detox, I got my life together. You know, that's why I was talking at the summit three years ago. And, and I had a severe back injury a year after the summit. And for the past two years, I've been working to, to heal that back injury. So I healed my broken mind and still working on it. Um, and, and, and then I broke my back. I didn't actually physically break it. I had a disc herniation and I came out of that. I couldn't even sit for 14 months in a chair, not for more than 10 seconds. And I couldn't travel and I had to stand for every single meal for 14 months. So I healed the, the mind, I healed my body, 
I hope, I pray to God that there's no more breaking and that I can just go through life learning in a different way aside from being shattered. Um, but I do have a deep, deep understanding of the, 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 these subjects because of it, and that's what I want to pass to you today. Um, that's the, the knowledge and the wisdom that I want to share with you um, and that you can take home and implement. So, <laughs> uh, oh, these are some photos. That's uh, Gabonese visa. That's me in the doing a dieta. Those are the shamans in the top right, the jungle on the bottom right. That's a parasite that came out. I've probably crapped out about 500 of those, um, and so have 9 out of 10 of my clients visibly see worms when they do parasite cleanses, and that's just one of many different species of worms. So um, if you're wondering why you're tired after eating that meal, it's because the worms are having their food right now. So here is me uh, two days before I was about to go to Africa. That's at CVS, passport photo and then the one on the right. That's kind of basically before detox, after detox. Um, or you could just look at me now. But it's a pretty, that color is literally the color of my skin. There was nothing altered there. I was yellow. I was literally yellow. Um, that's just a straight up CVS photo with no doctoring. And uh, I took a photo of a photo. That's a staple on my left ear, ear not an earring. <laughs> um, so I was going to make, this is, this, is the, uh, this is a joke, okay, and I just want to start with that. Basically, I'm just labeling all of these crazy, crazy things. I don't want to get anyone too nervous, and I just want to say this is a joke. But this is the stuff that I have done, not all of it, but this is like what you hear about in New Age spirituality, right? You hear, okay, what do we have to do if we want to get spiritual, if we want to heal ourselves? Yoga, self-help, keto diet, NLP, ayahuasca, iboga, San Pedro, peyote, DMT, biofeedback. Meditate, chant mantras, drink green tea, actualizations, visualizations, rolfing, psychics or physics, either or. <laughs> Homeopathics, discover your Enneagram, balance your meridians, hormones, cell salts. Balance your minerals, do astral projection. Then you have to practice lucid dreaming and macrobiotics. So you do macrobiotics, then keto, then keto, then macrobiotics, right? F do float tanks, acupressure, massage, sun gaze, primal therapy screaming. Sasha, you know that one. Eat with your hands, tape your mouth closed at night, swim in the Ganges River, see the Dalai Lama, reconcile your past lives, do hypnotherapy, go to a chiropractor to get adjusted, hang upside down, meet up with Native American shaman and do a sweat lodge, take Chinese herbs, shower in cold water, write affirmations, fast, go to India again. Then you take amino acids and nootropics, you gotta get your aura red, and you gotta carry a crystal with you, okay? <laughs> get your chakras balanced, those guys over there will help you with that, and acupuncture. Then you got to fast some more, water fasting, dry fasting, potato fasting, rice fasting, negative ion generators in all of your bedrooms and bathrooms, go to Tibet, psychotherapy, have tantric sex, which she can help you with, <laughs> track your sleep, get an aura ring, forgive your family, do a landmark form, ozone therapy, Beamer, PEMF, infrared sauna, juice cleanse, kundalini yoga, and what else did we do today? Breath work, right? It's like freaking overwhelming what we need to do to get our peace. And a lot of these things are amazing. It's no, no, no down uh, to any of these things. But this is w how confusing and how much goes on in the spiritual journey and the healing journey. And it's just overwhelming. And it's my job to overwhelm you again today, but in a way that hopefully can be implemented in some sort of way over your next year or so. Okay? So no more joking, this is a serious talk. The sad truth, 100,000 new chemicals have been introduced in the past century, okay? In the past century, over 100,000 new chemicals have been introduced and our detox pathways have not had a chance to catch up. Our liver, our methylation, and all the detox pathways cannot catch up to this onslaught because it's coming way too fast. So what we're seeing is, Massive growth in depression, suicide, autism, uh, schizophrenia, many other ailments, uh, ailments and illnesses that we didn't even know about 80 years ago. We didn't even have names for it, okay? And now it's like a mainstream thing. And there, so this is, this is flame retardants in breast milk. Actually, this individual chart is autism in the world, and it's an exponential curve. Whenever you have an exponential curve, Remember that at a certain point, you reach a place where 
scientists b basically will say that you are fucked, that it's too late, you, you, you've gone too far. And in auti with autism, that um, amount of children born with autism is absolutely astronomical right now, and it continues to go higher and higher, and we hit that point around 2026 or 2028 where it's basically, you are fucked, where one out of every two children could have some form of autism, okay? And it's hard to believe that because you, you're probably not connected to autistic families, but doing what I do for a living, working with autistic children and families who have uh, autistic children, um, it's... Uh, it's, it's insane what's going on in the world right now. That's a similar, a similar expression would be PBDEs, which are flame retardants in breast milk, is actually a similar graph, okay, in terms of what it would look like. So the mysterious cause of disease. This is actually taken, this was taken at my dad's house, and that's my stepmom and my dad and their family that's their bathroom after what I went through. You know, they still haven't changed anything. But um, those are all chemical-based products that most of you may use, depending on how savvy you are uh, with detox. And all of that is going on your skin, crossing your blood-brain barrier, and infiltrating your brain, your body, your blood, your organs on a daily basis, compounded day in, day out, for decades and decades and decades. When literally all of these things can basically be replaced with like essential oils and coconut oil. Um, so, what is the mysterious cause of disease? Okay. What I learned through my torture was that my body was holding on to pounds and pounds and pounds of fecal matter old, rotting fecal matter. And if somebody is obese, we're talking 10, 20 pounds more than a person who's, who's thin. Because um, honestly, there are people who, thin, people who are thin who have tons and tons of parasites and old fecal matter. It's not a direct proportion, but I can guarantee that a lot of obese people are dealing with fecal matter more than they're dealing with actual fat. If they could get rid of their fecal matter, a lot of things would change. So there was a doctor, Dr. Harvey Kellogg, who was decades, centuries ahead of his time. He did, I believe, 200,000 colon surgeries. And in those surgeries, he didn't find one colon that was the way it was supposed to be. Every single colon was folded in on itself with old fecal matter inside of it. And that's kind of where the juice movement, the cleanse movement, the detox movement, that's kind of where it, it, it reaches. And that's what I thought was the truth and, and the deepest truth. But what my journey, because I had done all of that for years through my ayahuasca and my cleansing, but my journey taught me that there was another layer. And what that layer was, was parasites, plastics, chemicals, heavy metals, and all kinds of other toxins that are stored deeply in the organs and tissues that have to be purged to get this physical body working the way God intended for it. Um, and of course, all of these things are exacerbated by trauma. Um, heavy metals and toxicity affect pe different people differently. When you have a traumatized individual, heavy metals and chemicals are going to really, really damage them. And when you have someone who has an amazing life and has never been compressed by the, by the universe or by their family, uh, it won't affect them as drastically. Um, so. This is where I'm going to start getting into, into the good stuff, and this is my prescription, my formula, and I'm not holding anything back. If you want to take notes, sure, or if you want to get the video later. But this is basically five and a half, six years of suffering uh, that I'm going to just distill to you of the most important pieces of the puzzle, keeping it as simple as possible, but I'll still probably overwhelm you. Um, we have physical stuff, structural stuff, energetic and spiritual, and emotional, okay? We'll start with the most basic form of physical detox, which is changing your water. Um, speaking of water, <laughs> I need some. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So, typically we want to drink uh, natural spring water or uh, distilled water. Um, natural spring water is from the earth, 
and it's God's gift to the earth. You can find springs at findaspring.com. You can buy a water distiller. You can buy spring water. But drinking tap water is a recipe for your calcified pineal gland. It's a recipe for more toxicity, fluoride and chlorine and all pharmaceutical drugs. You can go anywhere in mainstream articles and you can find that not one scientist will rebuke the fact that um, that there are pharmaceutical drugs in our tap water. Distilled water at Whole Foods is in, is in plastic bottle and distilled water, so you can find awesome spring water. Um, I'm probably drinking tap water right now. You, <laughs> You could find awesome spring water at Whole Foods, uh, in glass is better, but uh, uh, the distilled water at Whole Foods is going to be in plastic, and that's not ideal. The RO water is pretty good there, but RO water would be lower on the spectrum of what you want to drink. I would say spring water would be number one, distilled water would be next, and then you could get um, uh, like an AquaTrue or a Big Berkey filter, and then next would be RO water. All of those waters are going to be good, and you're not going to be introducing toxicity into the body. Water is the elixir of life, right? It's, we're 70% water, so let's just start there. Let's just have good water, right? We go to Tony Robbins conferences. We spend hundreds of dollars at Infinite Man Summit. We go to all these different things. What about changing the literally what's made up of 70% of our body? And our water becomes our blood, right? So instead of spending money on conferences, drink different, just drink better water, you know? Um, we want to remove toxin exposure. So we have the laundry room. Remove, get rid of the, the Tide detergent. Get rid of the bleach. It's all going onto your clothes, which is going onto your skin. Whole Foods has alternatives to almost everything that I'm talking about here. In your laundry room, in your bathroom, soaps, makeups, conditioners, shampoos, go to natural alternatives. Um, again, Whole Foods will, will have natural plant-based alternatives. And for moisturizer, just use coconut oil. A couple drops of lavender oil, super easy. In your kitchen, you want to make sure you're not using toxic aluminum pots and pans. And your detergent that you use for your dishwasher, just get plant-based. Even the plant-based stuff at Whole Foods is still going to be have some issues, but it's 99% better than Tide or the chemical-based stuff. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Dr. Bronner's soap mixed with a bit of borax. Excellent. I do that all the time. And if your clothes are really stinky, you can use zeolite with borax and essential oils. That'll get rid of, and baking soda. That'll get rid of any odor. It's like if you're trained jiu-jitsu with your gi, Mike. <coughs> Your girlfriend's like, oh, finally, we get rid of that stinky gee. Oh, she trains too, though. <laughs> um, all right, so the next things we want to remove, it's always easy to remove the toxic stuff before we start introducing new stuff. How am I on time, by the way? I'm good? OK. This might be a long talk. No, not that much longer. All right, so uh, amalgams. Get rid of your mercury fillings by a qualified biological dentist. Do not get them removed at a standard dentist, okay? If your dentist, if you go to your dentist's office, if any of you have mercury fillings, do any of you have mercury fillings? Okay, we should all chip in $20 and have them get rid of it tomorrow. But, um, and I'd be willing to do that if money is an issue. Um, so mercury fillings are basically little demonic travel partners that you bring with you everywhere. <laughs> and they are really, really harmful. And you want to go to a biological dentist, a dentist who knows how dangerous mercury is and who's going to use a dental dam, who's going to use an ionizer in the air, who's going to give you a protocol before and after, who's going to cover your mouth. Um, there's a couple of other things they have to do. Don't go to a regular dentist who just drills into the mercury. They, you know, it's a thing that dentists have a high suicide rate. And I always, one of the conventional things that people say is, well, that's because they're hurting people all day, drilling into their teeth and hurting them. I think that's total BS. I think it has to do with the fact that they're breathing in more mercury than most people. Uh, maybe not anymore, but for sure back in the day. Um, and that's just a theory. There's no science supporting that. 
so breast implants, there's a huge thing called breast implant illness where people where women are dealing with toxicity from breast implants, also from IUDs, copper toxicity from copper IUDs, very, very, very bad to get. E even the marina, which I, don't, which I think is the hormonal IUD, is still there's huge issues going on with, with those IUDs and uh, toxicity. Avoiding large seafood, avoiding vaccines, I guess that's still up for debate, but I'm for sure anti-vaccine, and avoiding uh, tap water. Okay, next, EMFs. Sasha has, yeah, go ahead. If the question adds value to the current conversation, let's do it, um, but not, we'll do questions at the end, yeah. Just a question in regards to the tap water. Um, yeah. So Brific or anything like that is, is useless, is it? Brita? Brita or whatever it's called, yeah. Useless. Boy, filtering. Useless. Useless. Yeah. Okay, Thanks. Totally useless. A good filter is a big Berkey or an Aqua True. The final thing is probably the most important on this list, which is EMFs. So most people are not aware of how intense and debilitating electrosmog can be. Electrosmog is basically electromagnetic radiation from Wi-Fi, from cellular antennas, from microwave antennas, from our cell phones, from, uh, from uh, outlets. Um, and we are living in an, an epoch right now that is dealing with levels of EMF that we have, this is an experiment. We are all walking around in an experiment right now with how much EMF is going on. You can't go anywhere in this city without being blasted by Wi-Fi. And now with potentially 5G coming into these areas, it's a whole other shitstorm. Sasha is very familiar with EMF and how serious it is. He's, I know he's sensitive to it. I'm sensitive to it. And most people are just too, Honestly, to be blunt, most people are just too toxic to even understand what EMF is doing to them. When you clean this vessel, which we'll talk about how to clean this vessel, there's a little bit of a issue that comes up. And the issue is that the cleaner and cleaner you get, the more and more sensitive you get. So it's actually hard to live in cities when you're doing deep detoxification or energetic work because you're being, the, the, the split, the, the discrepancy of where you're going and what you're doing versus the energy that you're in is so different that it's, it's hard. So, you know, there is a, there's a little bit of a downside, I guess, to, to, you know, starting to diligently work on your health and, and on your, your body is that you're going to get sensitive. You're going to get really sensitive to energies and, and to Wi-Fi. I mean, it doesn't have to be a crippling sensitivity, but I, I guarantee after a year of detox, you could s sleep next to a router and say, I for sure know like that router did not help me sleep at night. So unplug your routers at night. That's what I'm getting at. Unplug your routers at night. Don't put your cell phone in your room unless it's on airplane mode. Uh, get a timer for your router. It's one of the most important things you can do is just getting a, t a $10 timer on Amazon for your router, having it shut off at 10 at night or 11 at night and come on at 7. At night is the most important time to reduce EMFs. Um, one hour of nighttime exposure is equivalent to about seven or eight hours of daytime exposure because your etheric, your energy body kind of goes down, collapses a little bit and, and basically uh, decompresses. So your, your, your defenses are down at night when the uh, EMFs are blasting you, okay? So, we want to avoid, this is, my advice on this is different for different people, um, and you don't have to follow all of this to a T, that, but basically, the general rules of thumb are avoiding homogenized pasteurized dairy, avoiding sugar, for some even avoiding fruit sugars, um, but of course refined sugars. Depending on your, you know, if severe mental illness, there's actually um, psychiatrists who have, there is very well-known psychiatrists who have cured schizophrenia with literally just putting their client or their patient on zero sugar, zero fruit sugar, zero any sugar, and they cured schizophrenia that way. So with severe mental illness, I always say that people should go on zero sugar. Um, in, it, what's that? Yeah. Inorganic GMO vegetables, you want to avoid anything inorganic and GMO vegetables. You want to avoid inorganic meat, gr eggs, grains. Eat organic. Put your money into organic food. Grow your own food. Put your money into clean food. Even though it's more expensive, it will 
follow through for you. It will make you more money. I promise you. I promise you because I have spent every single penny of mine on my health and I make an amazing living now because all I did was spend every single penny I have on my health. I didn't care how much it cost. I didn't care how much I didn't have or what my budget was. As long as it was a grounded decision and not coming from a place of like fear or you know, there's many different ways to spend money, but if you can spend your money in a grounded way, go for the organic and high, stuff that's made with love, not the GMO, not the mass produced stuff, okay? So starch and protein in the same meal is generally a bad recipe. Many of you probably did that right now with the tacos, meat and tacos, meat and the corn tortillas, maybe while you're a little tired. Um, and uh, for a lot of clients with chronic illness, I think a lectin avoidance diet is great. No nuts, seeds, beans, and grains, unless they're sprouted, pressure cooked, because they're loaded with lectins, and plant lectins is a huge, was, was a huge part of my healing process to avoid lectins. And you can read up on, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Plant Paradox Diet is the, is the book to read if you wanna dive deeper with that. Lectins are basically nature's defense system. Plants have a defense system that, uh, they, plants can't bark or growl or run or scream. They have to have phytochemical, they basically have to have biochemical warfare against a predator who's gonna eat them. And that's what lectins are. So we have to deactivate the lectins. Um, all right, and I'll start, I'll just move. Uh, it's a lot of information, I realize that now as we're, <clears throat> as I'm in, in it, so I'll move a little quicker here. Um, Incorporate things like cooked and raw organic veggies, organic free-range eggs, free-range chicken, and grass-fed beef, if you can tolerate it, if your body likes meat. A lot of people do not like meat. Juices, bone broth, smoothies. This is my magical potion right here. This is how I resurrected myself from the dead. Nutrient-dense foods. Colostrum, black maca, shilajit, maki berry, moringa, marine phytoplankton, bone broth, ghee, makuna, Kamu Kamu, Royal Jelly, Pine Pollen, Quinton, Ant Protein, Spirulina, Pine Pollen Twice, <laughs> Chlorella. Um, these are things that literally resurrected me from the dead because I wasn't getting enough minerals from salads and from uh, you know standard food, even standard healthy food. Okay, uh, and also things to incorporate: digestive bitters, chew your food thoroughly, and no liquids with meals. It's a really good bonus for digestion is if you could take bitters before a meal and if you can chew your food super thoroughly and not drink with a meal, I guarantee you you won't have a, a, the fatigue after meal unless of course the meal is bad for you. Um, this is a food list which maybe they can send you later. It's impossible to go through all, everything right now. But this is basically the food list that I recommend to most of my clients and uh, YouTube, people on YouTube. I have a big YouTube channel now. So this is what I recommend. And you can get a photo of that later or email me or email them and, and they'll send you that. Um, and this is some gut healing stuff. You, you wanna, the gut is the central channel. We have to focus on our gut. We have to heal the gut to heal the mind, okay? This is another recipe that I've put together that has helped heal my emaciated gut back three and a half, four years ago. Acacia fiber, butyric acid, licorice root, aloe vera, marshmallow root, and slippery elm. Those are some of the best. They're also some of the cheapest. Um, and I, I urge you to, to dive deeper with, with all of them and make a, a gut healing elixir. You can com combine them and actually make a gut healing elixir that is going to be really, really beneficial for your gut. Okay, let's get into some fun stuff. Um, how, what's my time? Oh yeah? All right, how, what's the vibe right now? Is it uh, too much information? Yeah? What? 30 minutes? And, and it's not too much information? Okay, all right, so then I won't skip that slide. I was getting a little self-conscious there. Um, all right, let me slow down and relax. I don't know where mo most people, like this, I talk about this all day, so I, I could just run through hundreds of things and it doesn't phase me, but I know for most people it's like getting slapped in the face with all this information. 
So this is another magic recipe. I'm glad I didn't skip it because this is actually very, very important. This, this alone, I have seen the most incredible results with severe mental illness, severe anxiety, severe panic, all severe mental illnesses that I've seen. This is a miracle, okay? And what this is, and I'm not a doctor, remember that, just a disclaimer. This is, these are binders, negatively charged substances, clays, charcoal, zeolites that go into the body and they, they're negatively charged and they absorb positively charged pollutants and toxins. They like act like a vacuum and they go into your body and they suck up everything that the body doesn't want and it allows you to pee it out or, or poop it out. And these binders, many of them are man-made or somewhat syn synthesized, but the best that I've found, and I've worked with probably 12, 13, 14 different binders, are chitosan, which comes from crustaceans, okay? Uh, microsilica, which is a, a fumed silica product. Most of you have probably never heard of it. Coconut charcoal, which comes from the husks of coconut shells in, put into a high temperature, low oxygen kiln, and you're left with carbonized coconut. The same is true for bamboo, which is takasumi. They carbonize t bamboo. Um, and zeobind, which is a zeolite product. Bentonite clay, which many of you may actually have heard about. And citrus pectin. You can actually mix all of these together and make a binder cocktail in a 32 ounce mason jar. I generally use a teaspoon of all of those except for the microsilica, which is two small little scoopers very small scoopers, make sure you use the scooper that comes with it. And don't start, at that. that's like the, the dose that you would end up at, but start lower and work your way up to that and do it on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. It will literally just suck out everything that the body doesn't want. All of your years of fecal matter and toxicity and uh, gushers and Oreos and uh, Doritos and what else did we eat? Oh, Hot Pockets, I used to eat a lot of those. <laughs> um, and uh, <clears throat> there's a lot more about, about that, but uh, you know, this will just be the basic um, covering of all of that. Um, oh yeah, that will constipate you. So it, it's a bolt, there, especially if you add psyllium husk into that, which actually makes it more powerful, psyllium husk powder, but uh, that will make it constipating even more, so you have to compensate with a laxative, uh, a gentle laxative like magnesium oxide or trifola or boldo. Those are my three favorite gentle laxatives. Um, so this is the basic way to cleanse. That what I just taught you is the things we want to avoid, the things we want to incorporate as far as food and diet. Then I just taught you how to grab onto toxicity and now I'm going to teach you how to get rid of what you just grabbed onto. Oxy powder trifola boldo, which is oral and you take at night. If you want to go deeper, you can do saltwater flushes, coffee retention enemas, or colonics. And I would say that that's in order of depth, basically. A saltwater flush is very simple. Anyone can do it. You just take two tablespoons of sea salt or pink salt and mix it with 32 ounces of warm water and drink that in the first thing in the morning. Uh, but there's a little more to it, so Google it before you do it. Um, coffee retention enemas and colonics. Okay, so those are basically ways that you flush the system. In, in my experience, the safest and most effective ways. Um, and now we move into structural issues. So there was an issue that I had that didn't get corrected until about a year ago. That was a very serious issue that really affected my immune system and my life. And that is, if there's one thing that you can take away from this talk, one thing, it's to go to an upper cervical chiropractor. In particular, I think the best upper cervical chiropractors are Blair chiropractors. And what they do is they actually take an x-ray of your upper cervical, your C1. The, your brain stem is housed by your atlas. And my atlas from years of jujitsu and fighting and street fights and wrestling and all that stuff and football and boxing and everything I did, my atlas was three millimeters out of place on the right side. And, my, uh, I, and it was causing pressure onto my brain stem. So I went to a Blair doctor, he x-rayed me, and he put my atlas back in place. And it was literally like 
do, 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 like like a str like energy vortex up my whole body. And anytime I'm out of alignment, I know right away, and I have to get adjusted once every few weeks. Still, it's a kind of a process. Unfortunately, it's not just a one and done thing, but it's very, very, very important if you're suffering to go get your atlas put back in place. I think that um, this is, if they could have a Blair upper cervical chiropractor in every single hospital and mental institution, we would see a dramatic change in the country or in the world. I truly, truly believe that. I know for a fact that people who are killing themselves, their atlas is out of place. I, I can't say that with a scientific background or any research, but I just know intuitively that people who are taking their own life have mega amounts of toxicity and their atlas is out of place. And that is what God put me here on this earth to go through that in order to be able to share that. I truly believe that. So the other thing that I realized after having a severe back injury is that we are really damaging our bodies with all of the sitting and the texting and the hunching and text neck. You see the younger generation with their, their neck and how it's like there's literally teenagers now who have lumps on their neck because they're so used to doing this. So what I, another thing I realized through my dark days of near death is that death wants us to go, co cave in. When you see old people dying of degenerative diseases, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, their body caves in. They become like stone. They calcify. Everything is just going in. So what we need to do to reverse that process is we need to actively open and come out. It's not just a, you can't just like, we have to physically do it. It's not just about loving yourself. It's not just about getting in touch with your heart. Like you need to physically open this body. And that's what foundation training taught me how to do. And uh, foundation training healed my back. So foundation training is an amazing series of workouts that works out the posterior muscle chain, the chain along the back side of your body that undoes all of the damage from uh, sitting and texting and slouching. So do some foundation training. Work on your posture. It's literally a 12-minute exercise each day. If you're overwhelmed, I'm sorry, but it's, it's not that much. Um, I, someone, I just got a look from someone. I was like, oh, shit, he looks overwhelmed. <laughs> um, and dental. Check out the mercury fillings. Other things not to overwhelm you. Root canals and cavitations are not so good for you either. <laughs> if you've ever had a root canal, you may want to get that checked. There are pockets of toxic bacteria in there. And um, this is the long haul. This is over the long haul you want to get these things checked, right? Not all right away. Okay, now we're gonna move into the fun stuff. I didn't talk about any of this on my last, at my last summit. Uh, I haven't, I've rarely talked about any of this anywhere publicly, actually. And this is stuff that's very, very, very important as well. And I would say, when I, when I said the people who are killing themselves have their atlas out of place, they also have toxicity, I can pretty much guarantee that they also have some sort of entities, energetic parasites that they're dealing with as well. So I think this is my, let me see here. Yeah, this is basically the last, there's just two more slides. So let me take a minute here and ground myself. It's a big subject. <clears throat> All right. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't really want to talk about entities and stuff in public, and, and some part of me was just has been reje rejecting this for years because I always felt like if I talked about entities in public, then people are going to discredit my, my detox advice. I can't sit here? Okay, I can sit here. But, um, you know, the thing that occurred... The thing that happened to me throughout my journey was that I realized that I also had energetic entities, parasites that were on, latched onto my energetic field. Different schools will have different trainings about what an entity is, what it means, how to clear it. Everyone, every healer, every shaman is gonna have a different paradigm about entities. And I'm not an expert and I'm not a clearer, but I've, I'm almost an expert by experience because of how many I had. Um, and how many I've had cleared. And the best book on entities, the best research and 
information on entities I've ever found is a book called Entities and Possession by Samuel Sagan, and it's the Claire Vision School. And this is the school. I got two mega, mega entities that were sucking my life force cleared from this school, and the school has changed my life. Unfortunately, Samuel has passed, but his book on entities is amazing, and I'll give you the general understanding of it. Basically, when you're a super young kid, or if you're experiencing severe trauma, if you get raped, if you do s serious amounts of drugs, any time that you do something that collapses your whole energetic body, your etheric body, you are susceptible to catching energetic parasites. Energetic parasites, are most of the time, are not evil demonic forces. They are confused, dark, sloppy energies who just are looking for a host. They're not like... Uh, that in the ex, you know in the exorcist the very intelligent demonic creatures that are moving your every limb they're more so just like uh, mosquitoes in that they're not evil they're a pain in the ass though and uh, they're sucking your life force so what I would say to you is that if that resonates and if if you've ever felt like you've had a voice in your consciousness that wasn't yours some sort of foreign thing that you could never quite understand or never quite, it felt like someone was whispering to you. Now, granted, we all have our little, we all have a voice that wants to hate life and hate ourselves. That's one thing. But there's a very particular flavor that entities have and carry, and they, 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 they bring forth a certain field of consciousness in your, in your energy, in your thoughts. And if you can read that book and resonate with what he talks about, I would encourage you to, to dive deeper with a proper clearer. And again, when you start diving into this, you're going to find a lot of bullshit, a lot of people that don't know what they're doing, a lot of people who clear and then the entities come right back, a lot of people who clear your entities and then they get sick for a week. That's not the right, they're not a good, they're not a proper clear if they get sick for a week after they clear your entities. So I'm just basically just putting this whisper out to you so that you can think about this and let it, let it germinate, okay? And, um, and I've had a lot of experience with, with, with these entities, basically, that I had one cleared before my last summit, and I had another cleared since the last summit, which changed my life dramatically. Um, and uh, there's also cords and samskaras, and energetic cords are basically, you know, with mothers and fathers and with long-term partners, most of the time we carry an energetic cord with them that some spiritual people say that you can clear these with willpower alone. I don't buy it. In my experience, in my journey, has proven to me that willpower is not enough to clear a lot of these things that we need. You know, there's a lot of schools, and there's no judgment towards these schools, but there's a lot of schools that say, if you just stand in your power and you put golden light through your whole body, you will be cleared of all your entities. Entities, go away. I command you in the name of Jesus, go away. Well, this is literally a parasite that's stuck, stuck onto my energy field the same way a ropeworm would be inside of my gut. How am I going to just tell that ropeworm to get out? It's, it's just not, it's, we, this is why we need each other. This is the essence of humanity is that we can't do it all alone. We need experts. We need surgeons, energetic surgeons and healers to come in and see what, like these guys over there, to come in and see what you got going on on an energetic level and say, this is up, that shouldn't be there, that shouldn't be there. Because that's where the illness starts. That is where the illness starts, right there, in your energetic body. Right now, you guys are all an exhausted looking bunch of meat bodies, but actually around each meat body is an, a massive amount of energy. Each one of you carries a whole freaking plethora of spirits and spirit guides and animals and creatures and parasites and all kinds of crazy things. You have your own universe inside of you in each one of these chairs, but we're out of tune with that. We are so out of tune with that. So detox can help you get back into it. Um, cords and samskaras is another huge thing. Another huge, huge, huge thing. I go to these conferences, and I love Tony Robbins. I love these self-help conferences. I love the Infinite Man Summit. There are certain things that cannot be changed with your own willpower. And what I mean by that is there are certain illnesses and darkness that you cannot just reverse the tide of with willpower. You can't just wake up in the morning and say, 
I am light today. I am love today. Today I am abundant. Today I make money. Today, oh, whatever this, the, the new age mantra, okay? All of that stuff is great and I love it. But there are certain situations that require intervention, require surgeries, energetic surgeries, sometimes maybe real surgeries as well. And some scars are deep, deep, deep wounds that we carry from multiple lifetimes. And these samskaras have to be worked through. That could take years. There's different ways of working through samskaras and different schools of thought. My experience is that when you hit a samskara, you have to really be present to that samskara and pop it or dissolve it with consciousness, which requires a massive amount of presence and sometimes assistance. So I think for sake of time, I'll move to my last slide here, even though all of this I could talk about for a long time. Um, there we go. What's up? Oh, what's the next one? Yeah, 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 that's just the f conclusion. So this one, um, emotional stuff, uh, again, just basically vomiting all of the information I've learned over the past five years to you. Um, let's see. Um, I'll talk about one or two of them. My favorite one is the spine protects the heart. You know, in, in New Age communities and in spiritual communities, everything is talking about getting to the heart and, and being an open heart and living with the heart. I agree with that, and the heart is the most beautiful part of all of you and me. But in this world, in the way that it is, how messy it is right now, if you're a walking heart, you have, it is very difficult to be a walking heart because there are so many energies and forces that want to collapse that and crush that when you're a beautiful open heart with love. There's so much out there, so much darkness that's the opposing force to that love that you have inside. So what I just urge my clients to do is to let your spine protect the heart. I don't know if you guys can feel this, but there's an energy inside my belly. It's like a, it's an energy that I used in jujitsu. It's like a martial artist. It's like a, it's like a little bit of a panther, a warrior down there. That's protecting my heart. I'm not just going around my life in just this space of like, L I love you, I love you. Even though it's beautiful, and there's a time for that in the right set and setting. But if you can get in touch with your spine, your belly, and let that belly protect your heart, you will have a much easier time on your healing journey. You're not going to get crushed. You're going to protect yourself. You're going you're gonna to protect the softest piece of you. Okay, and you can also be vulnerable. There's a, t there's a dance involved with all of that, but you have to protect yourself in, 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 the, in the way that is not out of fear. The spine protects the heart. Just remember that. And that comes in, what comes with that is boundaries. Boundaries, detoxing relationships, having boundaries. You don't need to have people to like you. Your job is not to have people like you. Be, that might be a, a crazy, crazy thing to you, but it's not your job to have some other people like you. I don't care who likes me. I, re I want you guys to like me. I hope you guys like me. I hope you enjoyed this show and this presentation, but deep down, I don't go out into the world and try and get people to like me or try and get people to accept me. It's a recipe for failure. Just be you, just be you, whatever your center is, whatever your heart is, whatever you are, be that and declare your sovereignty, declare your boundaries and don't let people come in the way of, of your healing journey and your journey with all things, with entrepreneurship, with whatever it is that you came here for. Use boundaries to, to not be the I like me fairy, you know? I had this character called the I like me fairy where I went into every event, every event, every party, everywhere I went, inside my body was, even though I was just going around saying, hi, how are you? Oh, good, good, and talking to people, inside my body was like a little fairy that was like, I hope he likes me, oh, I hope she likes me, and, and at the end of the night, I would go home and be like, it's okay, they all liked you, they all liked you, you can go to sleep now, they all liked you, you know? That's all I cared about, is I just want everyone to like me, I just wanted to look good. So find those characters inside that want to look good, that want to be liked. You don't have to sever them, but work on them. Work on them. 
So I think that's all I got for you. Uh, that's my website, Facebook, email, Instagram, YouTube, and my YouTube channel is banging right now. It's like 31,000 subscribers, so we're doing good. And that's all I got. That was a lot. Yeah. <laughs>